بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أيها الأحباب the fadl or benefits of fasting is no mystery to any of us and we know that fasting the holy month of Ramadan is an obligation upon us as Allah mentions in the Quran kutiba alaykum siyam kama kutiba alladheena min qablakum la'allakum tattaqoon fasting has been prescribed for you similar to the way it was prescribed for those who came before you in order that you would gain taqwa and taqwa Allah azza wa jal meaning that you would adhere to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and avoid his prohibitions and many other ayat and ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for example buni al-islam al-khams shahadatin la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammad rasulullah wa itai zakah wa tasumram wa wa iqama salat wa itai zakah wa sum ramadan wa hajj al-bayt wa kama qala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam listed in the hadith of Umar who he listed the pillars of Islam and as it is well known in Ma'lum bin Adin bi Darura that all the Muslims know this and even many of the non-Muslims know that fasting is something we do during the holy month of Ramadan Ayyulahbab fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala outside of Ramadan also is something azim and will make you be further from the nar, from the fire. And who from amongst us does it need to be further from the hellfire? And I think none of us can answer uh, within the, the negative that we don't need to be further from the fire, that we, we think we're safe from our deeds and, and so forth. No, none of us is that arrogant, bi'idhnillah. So fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially to enjoy the fast if you can on the Mondays and Thursdays and try to make that a part of your your habit and if you can't fast both fast at least one of those if you can get one day a week and make that a part of your life then there's ajral thing there's great reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you don't lose you never lose you don't lose and especially in this winter months when the days are short the nights are long it's very easy uh, for us during this time min fadli Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listen to this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we'll talk about some of the immense benefits that uh, Shaykh uh, Ali Bassam rahimahullah ta'ala may Allah bless him with jannah for those that he mentioned as far as some of the benefits and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the mu'allif of Umdat Ahkam uh, uh, al-Maqdisi Rahimahullah Ta'ala and bless him with Jannah for those because these great Imams they left behind treasures of knowledge which will is benefiting him now just the fact that we are seeking we're we are uh, making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for them uh, on behalf of them that, that Allah has mercy upon them and that Allah blesses them with Jannah for those then that means they left behind al nafia beneficial knowledge as the Prophet sallallahu said in authentic hadith if a person dies, then his deeds stop except three. Sadaqa jariya, continuous charity. Knowledge that is benefited from. And a righteous child that supplicates for him. So those great imams, they left behind knowledge because here we're reading... Uh, I don't know how many hundreds of years later their books calling people and people benefit from that and continue and continue and they're getting adjured for each every bit of that that's one of the greatest charities greatest deeds that you can leave behind is beneficial knowledge as the Prophet ﷺ said that's something that's going to continue and get you benefit in the grave Allahu Akbar May Allah bless us with that, ameen. With all three of those, ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. An Abi Sayyid al-Khudri radiyallahu ta'ala anhu Qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Man saama yawmin fi sabi lillah 
بعد الله وجهه عن النار سبعين خريفة رواه بخاري ومسلم إن أسهديته was collected in Bukhari and Muslim عن أبي سعيد الخدري رضي الله تعالى عنه He said that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said Whoever fast one day for the sake of Allah Allah will make his face far from the hellfire سبعين خريفة and سبعين خريفة أي الأحباب Shaykh Ali Bassam, he, he, he explains that that is uh, 70 years from the hellfire. So that is immense. That is something we need. The Shaykh mentions some very beautiful benefits here. He says, fasting, a siyam min ibadat al badaniya al shaqa, wal jihad min ibadat al maliya wal badaniya. The Sheikh mentions, he says, fasting is one of those acts of worship uh, which is a, 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 a difficulty on the body, meaning that it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a struggle. It's a struggle. It's not always easy, you know, to fast. Sometimes it's very long days, especially in the summer. Ramadan was very was very challenging, and especially if you're in a hot climate and, and and in the West here, the days are long, and you know that can be very challenging. But you're getting immense reward. So he says that fasting is one of those types of worship, which is tough for the body. And then he mentions, and jihad is one of those types of worship. Is one of the types of worship that requires the body and your wealth. Requires your body and your wealth, and it's difficult. It's not easy. It's not easy if you have, have any idea what those people who go fisa bilillah, what they, what they endure, if they even return back. And we'll look at the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, anu majma'een, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They went fisa bilillah. Some of them returned, some of them didn't. Some of them endured, look at Hamza, radiallahu ta'ala, anu. And his, his kidney, or his liver, or what have you, was eaten by his enemy. Wa'iyadhim billah. So, that is a difficulty on the body. So this also gives us, uh, as, uh, as uh, one of our mashayikh said when we studied this, he mentioned that قَدْ يُرَالْ فِي جِهَادْ طَاعَةٍ لِلَّهِ He said that, so this could actually, this hadith, and, and this is what it seems that Ali Bassam, rahimahullah ta'ala, is leaning towards, that this hadith is referring to when uh, the Prophet sallallahu said, uh, Som yom in fisibilillah. The fisibilillah here refers to that a person is fasting and in jihad fisibilillah. So this is the relevance for the Sheikh mentioning about that great act of ibadah. And then he mentioned some other very beneficial things, but are less relevant for our topic at hand. And then let's look at what he said, the benefits of this hadith, what we can gain from this hadith. He said, Fadl al Siyam, Abana jihad fi sabilillah ta'ala, wa ma yataratab alayhi min tawab al-azim. He said, this, this hadith illustrates for us the benefits of fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and of course, jihad fi sabilillah ta'ala, and what, and the great rewards that you receive from doing those great acts of ibadah. He also mentioned another thing, the other thing he mentioned. He said, so it, it, it is very apparent that he's, he's mentioning that, the, that this Fisa Bililah here is referring to the person who's fasting and uh, doing that other act of ibadah. So he said that this, what uh, restricts or restrains this being mustahab, this being something beneficial, if the person is doing both those great acts of ibadah at the same time, is that it doesn't weaken their body uh, while they're, they're striving in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if it's going to weaken you while you're doing this great act of ibadah, you're fasting, then you shouldn't fast. It wouldn't be recommended in that sense. It's recommended if it's not going to weaken you and affect your performance, so to speak, in striving in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
And those are just some of the uh, benefits. Also, some of the uh, ulama, they, there is differences about what it means, fi sabilillah, because all throughout the Qur'an, when we usually refer to something fi sabilillah in the, in the tafsir, in the Qur'an, it's always talking about that greater act of ibadah. It's talking about jihad fi sabilillah. It's not talking about making khuruj as our, our brothers who uh, from Jamaat to Tabliq do for 40 days and these things. That's not what it's, it's referred to. Usually, fi sabilillah, when it's mentioned in the Qur'an, it refers to that higher act of ibadah. So the ulama, they differ over the meaning here of what it means, fi sabilillah. And he said one of the goals is, is we mean, is it means, uh, or some of the different statements is that it means, as we mentioned already, that it's jihad, fi sabilillah. Or uh, another group of the ulama said that it means the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that fi sabilillah here means seeking the pleasure of Allah to wa ta'ala. Hafid ibn Hajar, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned that it's more general than all of that. So that means it's more encompassing. By saying fi sabilillah, it's more encompassing. It includes all of those. Anything you do, fi sabilillah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the sake of Allah, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It includes all of that. Ibn Daqiq al-Eid says that mostly when you hear jihad mentioned in the sharia, it's in reference to jihad. When you hear fi uh, sabilillah mentioned in the Sharia, in the Quran, or the Sunnah, it's mostly, in general, it's mentioned with regards to jihad. And this is what we were trying to allude to before, and there's many uh, other benefits, and those are just some of the benefits. And my purpose for mentioning this beautiful hadith of the Prophet wasallam is that in general, of course we have to have ikhlas lillah in our ibadah, fi sabilillah, and that you should strive to fast those Mondays and Thursdays and gain the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His forgiveness. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.